That's all. This is Snoopy. Right on. Snoopy's you. awesome. Snoopy is awesome. Hi, my name is Justin Bandy. I was born September 30th, 1981. Uh, <laughs> Nobody cares. B-A-N-G-Y. <laughs> I, I uh, like a fellow brother said, I'm somewhat ignorant of the uh, foreclosure process. I'm here to learn more about it and also simply fight for those who have either lost it or are in the process of losing it. I think that it's pretty disgusting that you can uh, basically not have a place to live because you don't have enough pieces of paper with ink on them. Oh, right on. Anybody else? I'll go. Hey now, I'm Patty. I'm live streaming. I'm from Occupy LA and I'm live now. <laughs> Very nice. So and I think it's so cool that so many houseless people are here with us today. Thank you for the correct statement. Hey, houselessness. You're on. Your turn. You guys, fine. Hi, my name's Leslie. Most of you guys already know me already. I'm originally from Occupy San Diego. Uh, I've been to Occupy Orange County, Occupy LA, kind of traveling around everywhere, helping out everybody. Um, I helped out with the foreclosure out in Long Beach. Sadly, we weren't able to save the home, but we did buy her a couple extra weeks, and she's still going through court processes. Uh, she found a lot of loopholes and stuff that she, the lawyers and them had never would have noticed if Occupy hadn't have come and helped her and looked over the paperwork. Um, I'm really glad that a lot of people came out here today because, like, you know, like everybody else has said, this isn't right. People shouldn't be losing their homes. There's more empty homes than there are homeless people, which isn't right. There's enough homes for everybody to have a house and be able to let somebody else stay with them, too. Just like there's enough offices and warehouses just in downtown L.A. alone that are empty that we could build probably five homeless shelters. So we definitely need to kind of bring attention to all of this. So I'm glad we're all here. Guy who can't stop playing the guitar. His name is Luke. <laughs> 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 when he's joining wow. the guitar, he can't yeah. stop while yeah. we're talking. What else would you like to speak to? Uh, Nathan. Sure. I just want to say you guys are all beautiful. Great energy on the way up. Bunch of sexy people. Hey, oh my God. <laughs> nobody asked you personally. Oh, he's our resident dirty hippie. Yeah. yeah. I haven't showered for a week. <laughs> Neither have I. But I don't consider myself a dirty hippie. I at least try to maintain the dirt. I'm the urban dirty hippie. I have a shower, I have a place, and I just don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah! Yeah! Oh. yeah. 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 So we've been 15 years. Gosh. Lies. Like, did we actually stop during this whole process of talking? Oh, yeah. Like, we're yeah. Here. That's well, my I goal. think we're here. Basically, that's why. We've been for 15 years. Oh, I forgot something. You guys all smell too. Mm -hmm. And we stink! I took a shower Woo! yesterday. Oh, you beautiful people I smell so earthy! I took a shower yesterday, shush. You wanna try? I drink while it's gone, I boil you with a shower. Your dream girl's gone a year without showering? Yeah. Wow. I think that's more of a nightmare. I haven't showered in a year. Your girlfriend hasn't showered in a year? No, his girlfriend hasn't showered in a year. Nate's. Uh, I grew up in the shower for 10 years. And you haven't met her yet. I haven't met her yet. Okay. Right. If you have valuables or you have something that you need throughout the day, please make sure to take it with you. Water bottle. Otherwise, it is staying on the bus. Water bottle. Yeah. Where is my water bottle? Uh, almost done. Is this your water? Bam! I'm ready. Let's do this. What's wrong? We're going to need to get some water from the hospital. My water bottle. Oh, you don't You don't have any water? You do? Okay. So, I have a question. I have a question. So, if there's a strategy meeting and I've hit mute during the strategy meeting, and then after the strategy meeting, I give a recap that says basically, uh, we've decided we're going to follow the law. Sean Demetrius. Is that is that wrong that I gave away our strategy? Excuse me. I think you would have to go. 
practical. No, but I'm just like, like from common sense point of view, like. Thank you. Just to double check and just to, you know, see why. I don't know. I, I, I would, think I would common think if sense. If it was not agreed upon, that that information was passed, be passed along, then it should be passed along. However, because if the strategy is that you're following the law, but are going to appear as if you're not, then that would be busting the strategy. Because strategically, strategy deals with manipulation. You're trying to manipulate your opponent into thinking you're doing something when in reality you're doing something else. So if your strategy is to follow the law, chances are you're going to make them think that you're not going to follow the law. Yeah, I didn't see it that way. No. I mean, what playing chess is all about. You're trying to manipulate your opponents of moving in certain ways, or at the very least, acting in a manner that is perhaps not the way they decided to do so. You know, the way I the way I play the way I play chess is usually very sporadic sometimes, and so my opponent usually doesn't actually know how I'm going to play. Because they might they might make a move, and I might follow up on it that looks absolutely just plain stupid. But because of that, they were like, "Well, I wasn't expecting that, so now what do I do?" Their strategy is lost. Directly, maybe. Yeah. If you do that often enough, you break their strategy down, and then you have the ability to play. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, my strategy is like, basically yeah, fuck theirs up. Yeah, I'm going to and then hopefully we're going to go and sleep on a couch. Let's get some fresh What about sleeping on a couch? Yeah, huh? I know. Ah. I'll be at Luke's or Liberty. My couch sounds fabulous right now. Right? Yes. All right, guys. Let's get out of the boys. I was just kind of waiting for the people blocking the aisle to pass. Yeah. No, I was just See, now we're just standing in the aisle. We could have been sitting down. Yeah, you make a left hand You know right what? There. I want to go to the bathroom. Who knows when I'll find one again. But can I pass? Go, go, Thanks. Go yeah. Your, your stuff is embedded in, uh, in uh, Occupy Park Foreclosures. Um, is that Occupy Park Foreclosures? What's the dot com? Dot org. Dot org? Okay. All right, occupyfightsforeclosures.org, if you guys can uh, tweet that out for me. I'm going to go ahead and hit me and put you in my pocket. I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay, I'll be right back, guys.
very important. Oh. Very, very important indeed. Are you live streaming too? Huh? Are you live streaming too? I gotta stop for a minute I'm having issues. What's your stream? Huh? My phone feels hot. What's your stream? Orange crew. Orange Crew, okay, I think I saw you at Occupy LA once. Yeah. Okay, so we have Orange Crew here streaming also. I recommend you guys watch uh, multiple streams so you get more of an idea of what's really going on. I, I had a stop for a few, I got something there. Hey, now if you're just joining us, we're here in Sacramento um, for the foreclosure action. No, anarchists cannot not have a flag. One, two, three, four. Is anybody, what is this building? Do you guys know where we are? What is this building right here? Huh? That's the capital? That's the capital? I believe so. Really? It's so not impressive. What did you do? What did you do to your flag? It somehow came unraveled. What? Probably from sticking it in your freaking thing yesterday. Oh, it looks badass though. I forgot what the agenda was. Does anybody know what the, the yeah, plan was for the day? I never know anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when she was talking Hi, about it, about it, the cops talking about it. My flag went anarchist on me and decided to unwrap it. Okay, uh, OccupyFightsForeclosures.org um, So OccupyFightsForeclosures.org will have like all the live streamers on the page and it'll tell you uh, what's up, what we're doing here, give you more information about what's going on today. Okay, so this poll right here says uh, seal of the Senate of the state of California. I can't see the screen. It wanted to do its own thing. It wanted freedom. Freedom, see. freedom to fly. It's like, I want my strings to fly. Hi, Susie Q. It's Because free. I'm free. Free I didn't say free falling, I said free falling, but <laughs> she decided to word it that way. That was awesome. Okay, so. So, why is the flag flying half mast today? Where's the flag? Wow, yeah, there's the flag flying half mast over there. I don't know what's up with right. that. Let's go change it. Let's go Yay. change it. Right now. Let's I would love to hear that, actually. And a key flag. We're going to take down the. and put up the. I want to fly a black one from the PCA flag. And I will totally not do it the right way either. Because. You're supposed to bring it up That's then down you when you dismount them when they're half mass. I would just take it down and then fly it upside down. Like oh, three quarters of the way up. Just to work. Oh, God. <laughs> I was a Boy Scout. This guy already told years. him that when I get new flip flops, he gets my sparkling sandals. And he was super excited. Yeah. Who? Luke? Oh, yeah. Oh, he would look, he could rock, rock that. that. He's like, those are beautiful. <laughs> He could rock. Does he have the same size feet? Will they fit? I, I really, yeah. I'm not a ceremonial. I'm not either. I never really cared about saluting. Even when I was a child, I didn't really care. I was like, why Why do I have to do this? I mean, I did it because I was being told. And
How's it going? Doing well. So what is your little table here? I'm live streaming. Do you want to tell the people watching what, what's going on here? Uh, There's a rally for the foreclosure group. Uh, we are asking for a moratorium on foreclosures to investigate them more fully as to whether the individual ones are legal or not whether all the signatures are there, the uh, lending companies have the titles to the properties. And, uh, and, uh, awesome. So where are you from? I'm from Sacramento. I'm yeah. with the 24-7 work group. And basically we occupy the uh, city hall and uh, distribute information about the various uh, activities and work groups. So if there's 24 7 work group, what, what is that? Uh, basically, we just establish a presence at City Hall and distribute this information. So are you guys uh, normally there at City Hall like every day? Mm, almost every day. Today we won't be because. We're I like that idea of, of having a presence and distributing information. I think that that's a really cool idea. I like it. Thank That's you. The basic premise of it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I want to carry the banner. Maybe I'll be on that side. I carry the banner around. So um, there's a lot of water here. This must be the the water tent. So uh, if you're just joining us, uh, we're here um, at the uh, capital uh, of California in Sacramento. We're at the State Capitol building. Um, the event is Occupy Fights Foreclosure. Um, they're asking for a moratorium on foreclosures for three years. Um, today, I am. they're supposed to be here in the Capitol. They're supposed to be... Um, voting on a homeowner's bill of rights uh, which would be really 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 awesome that would be a great victory but it's not over because we still need that moratorium so are you the famous patty beers i, I don't know that i'm famous but i'm patty hi. i'm john hi how's it yeah. going <laughs> good going good yeah thanks for all the friend requests on the occupy news radio thing. awesome yeah. are you with, are you with the occupy news radio yeah Okay, yeah, me cool. And Audrey, uh, 805, out in Ventura, are doing it. I'm from Oxnard. Oh, you're from Oxnard? Yeah. Cool. Are, are you related to Dennis at all? No. No? Do you know Dennis? Do Never heard of Dennis, Dennis no. Anyone ask you? No? No. Okay. Yeah, there is a Dennis out there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, there's not many uh, beers people floating around. Yeah. And it's funny, and I'm not related to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, hey. It's quite an event, huh? Get big. I hope it gets big. This is cool. Yeah. I didn't like when I saw this building. I was like, "Is this not a very impressive building?" Um, this is the state capitol. Yes, state capitol. Really? So, so not impressive. It's a, it's a small one. I think um, in Austin, Texas, the there's a state capitol, and it's just way cooler than this. A lot bigger? Yeah. Well, it's Texas. Everything. <laughs> This is the second capital, too, of California, I think. What was the first capital? Uh, San Jose. Oh, really? How weird. <laughs> well, I'm just walking around, checking out, like, what's... Daddy, yeah, our city hall in L.A. is bigger. I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. I want to get a shot of the, the dude in the, the, the costume over there. Officer? Is that is that how the, they is that a police officer? He looks like a dude in a costume to me. He does. He looks like Reno 911. <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't know that that that, that hat is just comical. Yeah. No, he's got a gun on his side. I, I hope he's a police officer. Yeah. 
And he looks like a park ranger. Yeah. He should be on a horse or something. <laughs> Some of them have already filed uh, several complaints, but they're still give, been given the run Hey, around. Tim. And uh, so we want to see. Platypus, is that? It's hard to read the screen. Yeah, Hi, Platypus. Where's her up? It's over on I Street. And it's kind of creepy. Like, people walk up to me and, like, they know my name. It's a little creepy. I'm just getting my voice back, so hopefully I can get a lot of people, people to talk instead of just me. And we raise kids at home. They don't raise kids in the house. Okay, well, I haven't seen the uh, inside yet, but yeah, the outside kind of meh. Uh, meh. Like and to speak today, please come up to the side of the stage over there, on the side of the steps. Uh, Lisa will be speaking to you for a couple of minutes. Thank you. All right, check. Testing. One, two, three, four. Testing. Check, check, check. Yeah, okay, mic check. Do we have a mic check here? That is, that's our volume. So. How we doing? Nothing? I heard that feedback. Are you going to get to move the stakes out? Okay. Mm. Just going to go out of the background. Do we hear that speaker, not this speaker? Hey, the speaker. Hey, Michelle. How are you doing? How's it going? Very good. I'm very good. How are you? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's a summer day. It's not sweaty. It's a very good day. Anything happen in there? So do you know anyone that's dealt with, sir? I, I can't get involved with the issue. I have to be neutral 100% of the time. I mean, we have our personal views, but we're working it. Everybody but even as a, an officer, you can... Uh, Investigate if there's anything in the area that you think might be related to the At this subject. time, my number one job is just to spend. Just to keep the peace today. And just to make sure it just runs smooth. Yeah. I think so far we're off to a good start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's unusual for me to go to an Occupy event where there's just one, one law enforcement. <laughs> just one? Just one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even uh, GA, there's usually like four. So, um, what I'm hearing is that the stakes <laughs> cannot, that the sign, it's okay to have the signs on the ground, but not the stakes. Let me get, find out like what kind of media are here. So um, we have uh, some Spanish news, Noticias, Channel 19. Thank you for coming. having to find a rental, having their house taken back by the bank, having it dumped on the property, ruining the neighbor's values, and turning their loans upside down so that we can continue this devastation. 
this is the problem. over twenty two percent of our loans in this state are currently upside down and underwater. that means they're worth more than the houses are worth and that's what feeds into the foreclosure pipeline. ah the third word i'm bringing today is destruction because the banks created loans designed to fail to force owners to refinance when they couldn't refi in ah seven because house prices didn't go up enough then the banks started foreclosing and they started this terrible cycle they ruin the home values like i said which ruin construction jobs a, a contractor can't build when it's 200 a square foot and we're selling them for 80 a square foot are you kidding which has ruined the economy which has ruined more home values because there's more foreclosures more jobs lost more economic ruin it's already ruined over 8 million lives they're talking of another 11 million homes they're going to foreclose and it's ruining our future we have no future if everyone in the boomer generation and their parents is forced out of their home due to foreclosures and they have to go become a renter and the and fannie freddie and the banks want to sell millions of vacant foreclosures they won't even list them they want to put them sell them to hedge funds and they call it reo to rentals that's converting this whole nation into a renter nation and it's ruining and it's directed specifically at current property owners so every property owner runs the risk of losing their house if they haven't lost their house already watch out in five years you'll be out they will have your house too and they'll be doing what they've already done to over eight million people in this country and in the meantime they're breaking the back of the middle class the middle class had a lot of wealth in their property. It's gone. They pulled down payments from uh, 401ks, from savings. Families it's disappeared. This is the problem. If we don't stop it now, if we simply stop foreclosures, we have five more years of devastation to go. And that's why we're here today. We need every homeowner to get out of their chair and get up and say, stop this nonsense prosecute these fraudsters and these forgers the banks their foreclosure attorney mail firms the robo signers themselves they all fraudulently forge these documents and we're losing our homes over this forgery and when the attorney general says we got 25 billion the problem is seven trillion dollars don't think 25 billion is going to go anywhere and governor brown's already saying the two thousand dollar restitution per person they're going to take that to balance the budget restitution for people that lost their homes fraudulently should be a house they should get one of those vacant foreclosures. They should be allowed to buy that. The Fannie and Freddie should put a loan program together specifically for those people so they can go back into homes. That reduces the pressure on the rental market. It gives them part of the American dream again. They can buy a house at today's test value, two, which test, is what test. they all wanted in the first place. Test. And we would stop this pandemic. Excellent. Anything Thank else you. you would like to add? <laughs> Let me tell you what I really think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Let me tell you what I really think. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, now if you're just joining us, so we're here in Sacramento, California. We're at the State Capitol building, and the event today is occupied by its foreclosures. Um, how do we sound? Tim from LA would like me to let you know that uh, the fallout from Fukushima is, is uh, arriving here in California and um, that's, that stuff is messed up and poo poo. Uh, we're going to clean up our language today. Um, Carlos from Occupy Fights Foreclosure has uh, requested that uh, we clean up our language today. And we, we make our language a little bit more family friendly for the day, so uh, that stuff is messed up and poo poo. Uh, the sign over here says sales tax for Wall Street. And the sign over here says just say no to. Decent, hardworking Americans losing their homes. Get help. Occupy Santa Cruz. 
Um, also, uh, Carlos wanted uh, me to let you guys know that if you go to the OccupyFightsForClosure.org website, uh, you'll find all the links to the live streamers, and you'll also find uh, more information on uh, foreclosures and uh, and uh, what Occupy is doing uh, to to stand up against uh, foreclosures. That's um, OccupyFightsForClosures.org. Stuff's messed up. Stuff's messed up and poo poo. Well, the following people, please come to the side of the uh, the steps. Ross Rhodes is here. Uh, Bill Camp is here. David Mandel. Uh, Susan Holmes is here. Eddie uh, Al Rojas Jr. Uh, Reverend Ashia Day. Uh, C.J. Holmes. Uh, Brenda Reed from ACE, um, Archbishop King if you're here, uh, Brother Carter, Ernesto Vizcara, Lino Pedres, Celeste from Occupy Modesto, uh, Carlos V. Tollefson, Alma Ponce, John Shaman, and Monica from Occupy Bernal Heights. Uh, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a good a good view right here. Uh, no, not to talk right now, but just to come here because we want to talk to all the speakers. Uh, Look at that. Jerry, and where are you from? What's Rama? Thank you, Occupy World News. Thank you. Uh, Mic check. Oh shit, that's loud. Oh okay, Rama. Right. Everybody, pick up your banners and bring them up to the steps and hold them up. And come in closer to the mics here. Yeah, Fago or Nico, yeah, get the Occupy Sacramento. Thank you. We're starting about five minutes. That's your name, singer? Huh? I don't know. I know her name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot her name. Oh. Okay, so I see another police officer on a bicycle uh, directly ahead of me. Um, yeah. yeah. I've, I've never and seen we'll, uh, like, groups that have banners. Please. please come towards the stage. Oh, it looks like we have a, a DJ over here. Awesome. Baila, baila.
Dios, caribeños o cubanos, en la sangre tropical, para que respeten los derechos de mi raza, caben dos patrias en el mismo to try to find info because um, I knew, you know, I was going to come. Uh, they asked me to come and live stream. So I went to the, the website and I didn't find the information. So I had to Google, I had to, Google to find the information. Oh, wow. So I, uh, it took me to the Sacramento, Occupy Sacramento website. It was on there. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Yeah. the uh, Occupy Fights foreclosures link. Mi abuelo murió trabajando en la tierra, nunca salió del monte, siempre estuvo en la sierra. Cuando yo era niño me regaló un asador, se encargó la tierra, si un día paso yo, de día y noche trabajaba sin parar, pero un cacique lo quería despojar, como se pudiera, de cualquier manera, aunque de coraje mi abuelo se muriera, la muerte llegó y se tuvo que marchar, su alma de tal just want to make sure all our speakers are up here. Um, we've got uh, Ross Rhodes with Bernal, Bill Camp, um, Brother Carter, David Mandel, Susan Harmon, El Rojas, Reverend O'Day. C.J. Holmes, Jeff Kravitz, Brenda Reed. Are, okay. Um. Thank you. Uh, I believe uh, check, Occupy check. LA brought some uh, homeowners. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and come up here to the steps. Thank you. Thank you. There's a line um, to get inside of the building. I just wanted to take a peek. I'm not going inside, I just want to look. Yeah, I think even in Los Angeles, I think the steps would be bar barricaded. Um, it is, it's kind of pretty in here. Um, 
So I'm not going to go through the metal detector or anything. I just wanted to take a look inside. Um, so. It might occur to you if they knew, like, about the Occupy World News channel or. And, um. Oh, there's some, like, cool-looking portrait of, it looks like an oil painting up there. Um, I'd like to go up there and check it out. It's a really nice painting. And, um, these knobs are, this is just really pretty in here. Can I, can I go back out? Excuse me. So you're right, Tim. The inside does look pretty, and um, hopefully I'll go in there later. Good morning, everybody. And, uh, first thing I have to say is I did a, an anti-hot uh, weather dance uh, to bring us this weather. Yay! I don't know if anything to do with it. I think we all have something to do with it. And uh, to bring the cool Delta breeze. I only wish I could do an anti-foreclosure dance. Uh, and I'm sorry we all have to be here, but I'm glad we are. Um, uh, this is my... Uh, Partner in crime, Michelle Schock, and she'll be uh, co MC this morning. We've got a full pack program here on two chairs over there to the left of just those, those steps. You can uh, see the uh, schedule, uh, the program. Uh, Henry Ford said, It is well enough that people of the nation do not understand our banking and monetary system, for if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. So if anybody thinks that this whole bankster scandal, or as I call it, the great American swindle, wasn't orchestrated and planned and directed, you know, you can uh, believe uh, what George Collins said. It is best, George, George Collins said it best, the only reason they call it the American dream is because you have to be asleep to believe it. Uh, what we've seen in, in a number of years is um, uh, jobs being shipped overseas and corporations getting tax breaks for shipping those jobs overseas. And I remember hearing about that and I said, what? They should be paying our country for sending jobs overseas and they should get rewarded for creating jobs because don't we hear all the time job creator job creator um, they're stealing our children and the anti-family courts they're stealing our homes they're killing the American dream and um, Al Capone had a great quote many years ago the, inf the infamous Al Capone capitalism is a legitimate racket of the ruling class and uh, Judge Louis Brandeis in 1914 said, sunlight is a, the, to be the best of disinfectants. So therefore, all our government uh, meetings and things of that sort, committee hearings, should always be open because only the people who have elected all our representatives should have a, a say in the matter. Um, and if our elected representatives, after five years of massive foreclosures and destruction of families, uh, wakes up finally and then decides to do something, I think that's a little too late. And a lot of people speak that some groups like Occupy and other groups should be um, should learn how to work with moderate Occupy groups World because News they're now. a little too radical. I say that right the time of moderation was long past. That's the name of it. Occupy World News Now. Yeah. Yeah. As we often meet with legislators, we uh, and I hear about how they're talking about stuff, and I say, I have a question for you. How many thousands of people have lost their homes while we've been sitting here talking? We need action. We don't need any more talk. Uh, the overview of the day, uh, basically, as I said, right on that program there, uh, we're having this rally, we'll have a march, we'll be uh, having, people will have lunch. I encourage you to go into the Capitol for lunch and then stay there. Many of us will meet with you and then we'll lobby and then um, come back out here. We're going to have a bunch of teachings. Um, I want to thank Senator Noreen Evans for sponsoring the audio sound equipment for, uh, for the event, the uh, podium where I'm at, and VA Music. Joe Hernandez over there, the DJ for his music sound system. And uh, I want to give him a plug for hiring for future events. He's available and does an excellent job. He's done several events for us, you know, and uh, gratis. Um, and I want to thank overall all the Occupy groups, including Occupy Bernal Heights, Occupy Fights for Closures LA, yeah. Occupy Modesto, yeah. Occupy Santa Barbara. Thank you.
Occupy uh, Mariposa County, Occupy LA, Occupy Mendocino, Occupy Merced, Occupy Stockton, Occupy UC Davis, Occupy Woodland, and there are probably some other ones here that I uh, don't know about. My more on the way. Our buses are coming. Yeah, and I want to thank the people who came from a long distance away, some of whom drove all night to be here. And who says that a movement can't, can't stay together? Everybody has the Occupy movement and all the groups that have come together dying and we're disappearing and everything. Yeah, right. How the hell do you think a day like today was created? Um, I want to thank uh, Homeowners for Justice, ACE, Justin Faza, uh, all the community activist groups that are here, SEIU Local 18, 1877, Central Labor Council, Unite Here, UFW, uh, LACLA, and so many more. If your group's name wasn't mentioned, please forgive me. I do believe you're listed on the t-shirt for all time's sake. And I want to give a major shout out to Occupy Belfast in Ireland. They're having a big action today also. And in solidarity, we support them. And in January, they took over the empty Bank of Ireland, which is a beautiful old building, and they're still occupying it. So, long live Ireland. I want to speak um, somewhat as the cheerleader of this occasion, not because that's my job description, but because I think we need to encourage and empower ourselves. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. And if we look around today and we see with our, our literal eyes, it may not look as great as the potential if we look from inside, from the sacrifices that have been made, from the people who are here representing, not just for the voices of homeowners who are so under siege that they can't be here that we're representing, but also for those of us who know that injustice cannot stand and that the moral arc of the universe is long, but it will bend towards justice and we will have our day. And this is the day. But lest we be confused by the technology of the public address system, let us remind ourselves of the power of our individual voices. And someone please explain to me, why are we all circled around this seal as if it's something sacred? We are the sacredness of this event. I'm inviting you to draw closer. Let's gather towards each other because this is our power. And if you don't believe me, I'm going to go off mic. And if you can't hear my voice within the range of my physical voice, you are too far from this movement. Matter of fact, I'm going to like the wave. We're going to start over here one voice at a time and say presente. And by the time we get over here, I want us all to say in one loud voice, we are present and we are the 99%. if you got to use sunscreen and go to a shady area if you can't take the heat. The restrooms are located inside the Capitol building. They're at nearby restaurants and stores. And the children's area is and will be at that blue tent right there over on the right. Um, point out the children's area if you see young people coming. Encourage them to draw and express themselves. Back to you, Bob. Thank you, Michelle. Um, the warrior for us is one who sacrifices himself for the good of others. His task is to take, take care of the elderly, the defenseless, those who cannot provide for themselves, and above all, the children who are the future of humanity. So said Sable. Um, so I only see uh, uh, present outside to two law enforcement to the officers. Self -blame, so humiliation, and who took their own lives I've never seen so few missed. law enforcement officers at an Occupy event. Please, 
no matter how bad things are, please don't take, don't anyone take your life. Your family needs you. We need you far more than you think. This whole foreclosure mess is not your fault. Only by staying together will we all fight for change and for you to make things better for your children and for your children's future. They all need you. You're surrounded now by people who care about you, and many of them are going through similar things as you are. Talk to them, call them, fight for and with them. Talk with your friends and family. We're all in this fight together, and we all need each other. You want to hold this? You want to hold this? My live stream? I'm already holding this. Well, you can hold it with this hand. There are several tables set up along the sides. Um, for literature can, tables and other things that different groups have brought. Right. Uh, there's an information well. table. Uh, Bakari is at. Where is he? Oh, Bakari over there. He's a good friend of ours. Just right uh, there. Go over there and sign like up so we can, see, can you exchange see the information there, with you and share yes. stuff like that. Black and white. And, um, and stay informed and stay connected. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'd like to uh, start introducing some of our speakers. Um, Brother Carter. Brother Carter is a good friend of mine, and he's known as the guy who le leads the marches because he's got a voice and uses a. Um, uh, should be a white one. Uses a, uh, a megaphone and stuff, but he doesn't need it anyway. Uh, here's Brother Carter. Section of the front line. God bless everybody. We're going to take a minute right now and we're going to get into this song. Front line is something that Dr. Cornell West is saying. Inside of this song that touches and each and every one of us. Sisters of all colors. In some type of way or manner. For the precious children often putting up with our male mess. The real front lines. Working people fighting against unaccountable corporate power with its obscene levels of wealth inequality. Just the white Real one. It's online. Well, I just wanted to uh, sit there, so. Here, let's take that. Citizens of color I just don't know where everybody else went. Police power. So. Criminal justice system that oversees black people being convicted. 70% of the drug sentences, but yeah. commit only 12% of the drug Real front line is not just here, but around the world. It's done against the AIDS in Africa. Right. Some of Mexican workers, Colombian peasants. We are in the fierce urgency of man. We have love on the front line. And love on the front line is a dangerous way to live. Because in the end, no one wins. We are here today at our state's capital because across the state, throughout the valley, throughout the mountainsides, no one is winning when it comes to their homes today. The many children that are wondering if they're going to stay in the same school. Are they going to be in the same community? Are they going to have the same friends? Love on the front line is a dangerous way to live because in the end, no one wins. And it brings us here today it brings us here today because they are here to make a decision. Are all of us out here today that are fighting on the front line for our homes and the protection of those homes, the protections of these families, the needs, not the wants, the hopes that are familiar to each and every one of us, a neighborly love that we share unconditionally in this time that holds the fierce urgencies of them. And I come to you today to ask you, are you ready to stand on the front line? Are you willing to stand up for your hopes and dreams? Are you willing to keep the faith in your beliefs of the American Constitution? Are you today willing to fight to 
good fight. For this is the good fight. This fight that we're having today comes out of the First Amendment of our Constitution, where today we come to express the free speech. It doesn't matter of religion, because it holds in us as a people to come together for this fight, for the redress of our grievances that hold inside of a peaceful assembly, to petition and legislate right here to let the governor know and to let those that pass legislation know that this is where it stops. This is the end of the world when it comes to denying the families across this state. Love on the front line is a dangerous way to live. God bless you, and let's march forward to victory. Thank you, Brother Carter. Uh, dynamic and uh, expressive as ever. I kind of feel like I'm in some kind of church on a Sunday morning. Uh, Ross Rhodes, would you please step up and uh, and speak to the uh, the crowd? Thank you. Hey, um, wow, that, that was powerful, my brother. That was powerful. Uh, my name is Ross Rhodes. I'm out of the Bernal Occupy in San Francisco. I'm a foreclosure fighter. I am in foreclosure, and that's one of the great reasons why I'm out here today is to show my support for you that is supporting me. And, and you know, I come to you as a humble individual, but I tell you that the struggle that we have, boy, it's, it, this is just beautiful. I, I look at the crowd out here, and I, and I can see we, we are the leaders that we're looking for. We are the ones that help them make the decisions by our power in voting. And our power in voting is what's going to help us get to the journey that we're seeking to, to end these institutional banks that are running around here, foreclosing on people, coming out with their predator loans, uh, attacking seniors and minorities in their communities to give them the false presence and that they're going to have an American dream. They're going to get, oh, you can get money out of your home, you can get money out of this, and, and you can have a car, you can have a picket fence, you can send your kids to college. These are the things that those predators come out of the banking institution that were trained to come out into these communities and do. Make more money for the banks. And the banks turn around and they ask us for money when they get out of trouble, when they get in trouble. And then we turn around as taxpayers and give them money. And then when we turn around and need help from the banks, they ignore us. And that's why I'm here today also to help support this uh, our, our uh, Camilla Harris in her fight to get a moratorium on these banks where they will not foreclose on us. She needs our support. She needs our support, and we need to run out and check these politicians that are in here that are voting with the banks. We got the power. We're the ones that vote for them. We're the ones that put them in office. And we can be the one that take them out of office if they don't go with our program. And our program is to help the people keep their homes, help the people keep their jobs, and we want to show that corporations are not people. They are investors and shareholders. That's what they are. And we are the people. We got to fight for you because we can't be like Wisconsin to cut our nose off to despite our face. We gotta fight because that's where it starts. When you don't have a job, you can't get nothing. You don't have a home because you don't make no money. So what you need is to fight for your jobs, fight for your rights, fight for our homes, fight for our kids. Because if we don't do it now, they gonna have this struggle put on them next. So look, I'm a humble individual. I'm not up here to blast and talk about these senators and Congress people that are up here, but that the few that are helping us, Nancy Pelosi, Camilla Harris, Dave Campos, uh, Alvarez, these are some of the people in San Francisco. These are the people I know you have people in your districts that are supportive. We got to bring them out. We got to bring them out. We are right now, we're mobilizing, strategizing, and we, this is what's going to get us where we want to go. Amen, when we come together and mobilize like this, 
and then we organize, and then we strategize. Amen. Brother. Amen. Amen. Someone lost their ID, and the officer over in that corner has it if, if your ID is missing. All right, let's hear from Dave now. Good morning. Thanks for coming. I'm David Mandel, working with the group that organized this rally. And we're, we're here to start a new conversation. Occupy last year started the conversation about the basic inequality in society, about the whole concept of the 99%. We're here to start a conversation about the foreclosure crisis, to understand what really caused it and what really needs to be done to start demanding a moratorium on foreclosures in California. You know, back in the 1930s, more than half the states instituted moratoriums on foreclosures because there was a real similar situation then. Values had gone way up. People owed more than, they, than, the, than their houses were worth. They lost their jobs. They couldn't pay. And a lot of them did lose their houses back then. But a lot of states tried to do something about it by passing a moratorium on foreclosure. A couple of years ago, people were talking about that, but now it seems nobody is. We need to start talking about that, and that's what we're here for today, to start saying California needs to lead the way, declare a moratorium on foreclosures, and that's the only thing that's going to, to increase the pressure on our federal government and on the federal government to pressure the banks to offer real solutions to people who are still hanging on to their homes and real compensation for people who have lost their homes. Because the foreclosure epidemic has already stolen the homes of nearly two million Californians, and it's far from over. The banks have done what they do, naturally. They find the creative ways to make money out of buying and selling imaginary things, like credit default swaps and collateralized debt obligations and all sorts of other things that I can't even pronounce. They created this phony bubble of of uh, housing values that supported a whole industry of buying and selling homes, making loans. A lot of people made money off of that, but it was really a Ponzi scheme. Some of those who got out of it in time made off like bandits. But a lot of people, even who worked for the real estate companies, for the construction companies, they're now out of work. They, didn't, they, they got caught holding the bag. And most of all, homeowners who were unlucky enough to buy their houses at the, at the height of the, bu of the bubble, uh, or in the few years before the height of the bubble, before it burst. They were pushed by the lending industry into taking predatory loans and unaffordable loans that they couldn't really afford because other people were making money from those loans. And now tens of millions of people are unemployed or underemployed. We recently had a, 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 a lot of publicity about a settlement between the attorney generals in 49 states and the five big banks. And right now, this week, this house right behind me is debating and will probably be passing some version of what they call a homeowner's bill of rights that might have some impact on stopping some of the worst practices like robo-signing, failing to properly record assignments, dual tracking, and it may allow some people, make it easier for some people who can afford lawyers to more easily fight their wrongful foreclosures at court. But the, the problems being addressed by these measures are really only the icing on the cake. And the problem is that the cake has mostly been devoured already by the banksters, served on a golden platter by our federal government. The federal government has failed to do its duty to protect the people from these predators. It, it deregulated the, the whole finance industry. And because the, there was an insidious infiltration of the financial industry into government, of buying members of Congress, and of actually taking the jobs of the secretaries of the Treasury and all sorts of other things that are supposed to protect us. Is anybody here surprised that they used trillions of dollars of our money to bail out the banks while the people got sold out? Does that surprise anybody? No! We got bailed out. We got sold out. Yeah. Okay, there have been all sorts of programs that are supposed to help people, but they've really, all the, the help for homeowners, the making homes affordable, the HAMP, the HARP, these have helped only a very few people. We need, to, we need, and, and meanwhile, 30% of the loans that people still have are underwater. The people owe more, often much more, than the fake value of, of, of their, the, the real value of their homes, as opposed to the fake value when they got those loans. Okay, I'm over the time limit. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. 
homeowners need real debt relief real modification based on current values reduction of principal yes. those who lost their homes need real compensation yes. and the economy needs rescue and all those things go together by making homes affordable for people who live in them and allowing enabling people to get back into homes that's the best thing that could happen to get our economy working again this, that this hasn't happened yet is a function of power. People are scared, they feel helpless. Occupy has taught us about the problem of the inequality of wealth. Debt relief, mortgage relief, and an economy that functions for all of us will happen when enough of us, the 99%, demand it. Starting with the foreclosure moratorium in California right now. People before profit. And remember, housing is a human right, not a profit center for the banks. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Thanks for your leadership and organization efforts today. Next up, we have Carlos Maratin. He's taking the pain of losing his house to foreclosure and turning it into a passion of activism. Carlos Maratin, Occupy Fights Foreclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Sacramento, we're here to let the people know, especially the legislators, that we have had enough. 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 62 million Americans didn't wake up yesterday and decided to commit fraud. The banks did. That's right. Today we have a beautiful family here representing from Occupy LA. This is Dina Rodriguez. Two months when Regan was thrown into the street with her daughter. As you can see, she's, she's uh, severely disabled. But Bank of America did not touch their hearts and threw her into the streets. Yeah. Occupy threw her back into her home. Yeah. It is wrong, it is immoral, and it is illegal that they are doing against the families of America. We have had enough. 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 We are occupying the state capital today. We have up next Susan Carmen from Responsible Public Banking Institute. Hello, Susan. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Oh, it's the Public Banking Institute that I'm from. I want to say that this, the whole foreclosure issue has been fraudulent from the start. Banks uh, lied to, to homeowners, to prospective homeowners, to get them to sign mortgages that they knew, the banks knew they couldn't afford. Uh, mortgage rates were low in the beginning, a thousand a month, and then they went up in a couple of years to six and seven thousand a month, and the banks knew it from the start. This this whole thing has been an intentional fraud on the American people. And they say we are halfway through it, that a third of the homes in this country are underwater. The banks will continue to foreclose until we stop them. Not after the fact, but before it happens. Counties have the ability to stop the banks. We have to put pressure on the sheriffs, on the county supervisors and on the county recorders, which are crime scenes, to refuse to accept all these fraudulent mortgages, the papers that the banks are foreclosing on. And we have the power to do that. The counties have the power to do that. I'm handing out flyers that give a, a, a how-to list of how to do it, and I'll hand them out inside the Capitol to the state legislators. But go home and talk to your county supervisors. You elected them. They need to be responsible to us. Thank you. Right here. Big thanks to Susan Harmon from Public Banking Institute. Up next, we have CJ Holmes from Homeowners for Justice. A big welcome for CJ. My name is C.J. Holmes. I'm an independent real estate broker, and I founded Homeowners for Justice. And I'm here to bring you three words today. Forgery. 
pandemic and destruction make absolutely no mistake about it robo signing is forgery this is an actual forged document that Wells Fargo is using to foreclose on a home in San Francisco. This is a forged vice president signature. This is a forged notary signature. And this is the foreclosure mill attorney firm, Pike Duncan, who created this forgery, yeah. mailed it through the United States mail, and is a still on the preferred attorney list for Fannie Mae instead of being in prison losing their licenses. We must make a change. We must prosecute these criminals for forgery and fraud. They are using it to steal our homes. Pandemic! Don't anybody think that you're immune! In July, in California, over 70,000 homes are scheduled for the final foreclosure auction. That's over 3,000 families a day that are scheduled to lose their homes, be forced into poverty, into finding a rental, into losing all of their down payment. And we must stop this. This pan pandemic has already pushed 22% of the loans in this state underwater. There are over 2 million loans underwater. Don't think some attorney general settlement of $25 billion for a $7 trillion fiasco and 200,000 homes loans to be rescued is going to even make a dent. That's not restitution and that's not justice. Destruction! We are in a cyclical destruction. This is a cascading failure, and it has been started by bank fraud. They violated truth in lending. They created predatory loans designed to fail, forcing every borrower to refinance. In 07, when those poor borrowers couldn't refinance, they foreclosed. In 08, we had over 23,000 foreclosures just in the nine Bay Area counties. Don't tell me those are deadbeats. Those are people that can't pay 4,500 a year, a, a month on their payment. And so the banks took the houses back and they dumped them on our, our market and they destroyed home values. Do you know where jobs went? Construction is decimated. We're selling the homes for $80 a square foot. It costs 200 a square foot to build. All constructors, co contractors, builders, developers have been decimated or bankrupted. That's where the jobs went. And it won't come back until we stop foreclosures. Because foreclosures are ruining the jobs, which has ruined the economy, which has started another cycle of foreclosures, which is starting more job loss, which is more economic loss. It has ruined over 8 million lives, and they're planning to foreclose another 11 million homes. We're not even halfway done. If you think it's bad now, you wait five years. It's ruined the future of baby boomers and their parents. It is taking the massive land wealth transfer from the property owners and small business people to the uber wealthy because Fannie, Freddie, and the banks are gonna sell foreclosures in volume to the hedge funds. The hedge funds who have all the money on the world are going to take our homes and turn us into renters. And we'll be a renter nation with no hope of ever having the American dream. We must stop foreclosures. We must insist that our legislators do what Nevada did. And they passed. They were able to pass. Why can't we pass it? An affidavit of foreclosure authority. We must force the banksters to prove they have this right because we already know they don't. We have it in fact that these banks do not have to, the authority to foreclose. That's why they have to robo sign. That's why they forge documents and they've paid off our legislators. We, if you're not here today, homeowners, you get off your seat and you go to the FDA and you say this week,
when the DAs and the Attorney General are meeting to talk about foreclosures, you demand them to do a lawsuit against all of these banksters and foreclosure law attorney firms and robo signers and get a court injunction to stop foreclosures. Thank you. My God, what a powerful word. That is what you call speaking truth to power. Speak to our hearts. What are those three words again, CJ? What are those three words again? Destruction? Fraud. Fraud. Forgery. Forgery. Pandemic. Destruction. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Reverend uh, Ashea Odeye, uh, and everybody, it's Odeye, not Oday, and uh, a good friend of mine, Justice Reform Coalition, ACLU, Occupy Sacramento, uh, here he comes. Keep an eye on his walk, I'll let you know in just two minutes. <laughs> I was going to talk about something else, but uh, I can't do it right now. Because I just got off the phone with the sheriff. Um, for the past almost three years, we were fighting against U.S. Bank to preserve the Full Circle Farm, which is a family farm that was occupied and built up for over 37 years by my godson, uh, Tat Chow, and his father and family. Because of a, a little error after three years of fighting, the banks, we, they were able to get us out of, of the property just uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Since that time, they haven't allowed the people to come back and get their property. Uh, the people who are in there right now are gangsters, they're thugs. Um, they used to be part of the uh, medical cannabis community, and I, I, I feel so ashamed that, that, that I even have to say that. And they've been protected by the sheriff and by our officials. We had a, we had a meeting on Friday with the uh, county reporter and county council and Phil Cerner. Uh, some of his uh, chief of staff for uh, Sacramento County, and we 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 showed them a document which said that uh, these these which the banks had filed, which said that their documents were being filed for accommodation only and didn't reflect title. Well, they told us that, well, the people that filed that, they filed that because they didn't want to be responsible for anything. Now, and that shows you that they, they're allowing people to file fraudulent documents, and people are knowing that they're fraudulent, and so they're putting that stamp on there, and the courts are still using those documents as proof uh, for eviction. Now, we know the banks are asses. We know the banks are criminals. I mean, the whole banking industry is a criminal industry, period. It's always been a criminal industry, you know. Uh, we in this country had, with the Glass-Steagall Acts, had, had limited the bank's power like it should be. And now, what's happened is the politicians, the rich, the the, the flunkies of the rich have, have, have given these people the power that they needed to destroy our country and to destroy our people. And they've known this has been going on for forever and ever. So even though we're mad at the banks, that's not the people we need to get after. The people we need to get after are our officials. The people who are allowing this to happen. The courts who are allowing these these cases to come through in the unlawful detainers where they shouldn't. And I know they're trying to tell me to get off here, but I really got to say this because you know I understand what everybody's talking about, but 
you know, we've been, a, we, we, we've been, we've been at the forefront of this fight for a long time. And we've seen what's going on, and we know what's happening. We've gone to court with lots of people and watched their cases and helped them and seen how these courts overlook their own law. They don't even follow their own law. We have the laws in place to take care of this, but they don't follow them. Disrespect. It's totally disrespectful. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's criminal. And until we get those politicians, until we get the courts in line, the courts are so far out of line with this, it's ridiculous. Time. I'm going to get off now, but all I can say to you is that, you know, this is a war. And if you don't take it as a war, then you're going to lose. Thank you, brother. Thank you for that word. And now we've got Jerry Watson from Lima Economic Research and Development. This is my right job. No, no, I just want to echo my brother Odea, is it? And uh, that, that's where it's at. It's the legal system. We can't even call it the justice system anymore. We're bringing all the relevant uh, paperwork. Yeah. CJ outlined everything. We bring it there before the courts and we get no justice. And we will get no justice until we actually get the legislature to change these things put our, our assembly people on notice that they need to do something. They need to hold these courts accountable to us. We can do all the due diligence. We have all of the paperwork. I'm an example myself. I had everything. The banks wouldn't even show up into the court. And, and, and I got rendered. My motion was denied. I didn't even get default judgment. And so what we're talking about, we're up against a mountain. We do all this work down here. We get to we get our form with the courts, and some of us are never getting called into the court. We're going to deny even a jury hearing, and so that's what we need to do. Is we need to up the ante on the legal system itself, on the courtroom system. One of my brothers said we're going to rat them out, rat out some of these names in Central Bank uh, uh, in Central Courts in Los Angeles. We got Dale Susan Fisher that's rubber stamping all of this on uh, uh, all of these foreclosure uh, bills. She's endorsing it. She's complicit with the criminal activity. All the judges are. George Wu, that's another one. We've got several that we can name. There are a few that try to uphold the right paperwork and that kind of thing that will allow us to move forward, but the lion's share of them are all bought by the bank. We are facing a corrupt legal system, and we need to know it. And that's where the juggler vein is. That's what we need to address, and that's what we need to get a hold of, handle on. Before we do that, all this that we're going on right now is null and void. We've got to push that envelope. We've got to make that justice system accountable to the people. That's right. We're coming out and right around the stage. The time has come for us to voice our rage against the ones who trapped us in a cage to steal from us the value of our rage and underneath the vestiture of law the lobbyists said Washington do not Liberty, the bureaucrats give fall. And until they are stopped, we won't withdraw. We'll occupy the streets, we'll occupy the courts, we'll occupy the offices of you till you do the bidding of the many, not the few. This nation was built upon the right of every person to improve their plight. The laws of this republic they rewrite. Two, one, and we will. This nation was built upon the right of every person to improve their plight. 
laws of this republic they rewrite. And now a few own everything in sight. They own it free of liability. They own, but they are not like you and me. Their influence dictates legality. And until they are stopped, we are not free. Try this course, we'll occupy the street. We'll occupy the street, occupy the courts. Occupy the court, occupy the office. We'll occupy the offices of you. Until you do, until you do the bidding of the many, not the few. You want to try that course again? We'll occupy the streets. Two, three. We'll occupy the streets. Occupy the courts. Occupy the courts. We'll occupy. We'll occupy the offices of you. Until you do. Till you do the bidding. The bidding of the many, not the few. Y'all got that course? You enforce your monopolies with guns while sacrificing our daughters and sons. Certain things belong to everyone. Your thievery has left the people none. So take heed of our notice to redress. We have little to lose, we must confess. Your empty words do leave us unimpressed. A growing number join us in protest. Here we go with the courts. We'll occupy the streets. We'll occupy the streets. Sing, we'll occupy. Occupy the offices. We'll occupy the offices of you. On your own, till you do. Not the few. You can't divide us into sides. And from your gaze, we cannot hide. Denial only serves to amplify. Check this out, y'all. Our government is not for sale. The banks do not deserve a pay. We'll not reward those who fail. And we'll not move to we prevail. I'm getting off this mic and we're going to sing, we're going to occupy. Can we please sing that chorus one more time? You can sing it tender or you can sing it passionate. It doesn't matter. Just lift your voices and let's remind ourselves that we are the many and our voices are powerful. We'll occupy the streets right here. Occupy the streets. Occupy the my comrades we are the many they are the few thank you Michelle um, that was the second time I heard heard that song and the first time uh, Actually, the second time, it's even better than the first. Um, is Brenda Reed from Ace here? If you are, please step up. Anybody? Brenda Reed? Okay, if she's not here, uh, I'd like to introduce 
Uh, Jeff Kravitz. Jeff is an attorney, a longtime activist, constitutional uh, lawyer. Uh, plus, he recently ran uh, for uh, supervisor, uh, board of supervisors in uh, Sacramento County. Yes, Jeff. Thank you. Hi there. Now, some of you uh, may have seen last year in October, I went before the Sacramento City Council and I uh, made a statement. It's on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you really should check it out because it's pretty good. Anyway, in this statement, I told the City Council that they were wasting their time and money uh, arresting people who were part of the Occupy protest at a park called Cesar Chavez Park. You might remember Mr. Chavez participated in some civil disobedience during his lifetime and they desecrated his memory by arresting people participating in civil disobedience. It was a disgusting thing and I told the city that they were wasting their time and that in a, in, in a short time that they knew that all the charges would be dismissed because people like me and others would defend all of those are people who were arrested for free. And I'm here today to happily tell you that on Friday afternoon, the last charges against any Occupy protesters were dismissed. After the city of Sacramento wasted your tax dollars, those dollars that could have been used, that could have been used to keep the swimming pools open in the hot summer so kids would have a place to cool off, they chose to waste them on foolish prosecutions, but we showed them that freedom of speech continues to exist in Sacramento because people were willing to go to jail, they were willing to risk it to defend freedom, and you did it, and you should congratulate yourselves for doing it. Yeah. Right now, you are the people who are fighting not just to defend your own homes against foreclosure, but you are the people on the front lines fighting to defend the United States from an economic calamity that is right around the corner. In the past year, there's been a slowdown of foreclosures because of the fact that these lawsuits were going forward that you might have heard about. The lawsuits have supposedly been settled. Where that money is, well, I don't know. No one's seen that money. The, st the state claims they're going to take it and use it for the general fund instead of giving it to people. A new wave of foreclosures is about to descend and decimate the economy, as one of the previous speakers so eloquently explained reducing people's values of their property, increasing unemployment, increasing misery, increasing homelessness, decreasing the tax base of the country, and serving no purpose whatsoever. We're here to propose that, they, that there be a foreclosure moratorium, but that really is the first step. The next step, the one that is absolutely necessary, is that there has to be an agreement that the banks write down the principal amount owed. Every other measure is a trick. Now they might help people, I don't deny they help people, when they lower people's interest rates, what you do is you then sign a new loan agreement for another 30 years. If you're paid for 10 years, then you're paid for 30 years. So the piece of paper that the bank has is equal to the same amount as it was before. That's how finance works. I mean, it'll take a long time for me to explain financial paper, but that's how it works. That's why they do it. And when you think about that, there's no reason 30 seconds. why every single bank in the United States doesn't simply allow everybody to do it. Why they ever deny it makes no sense because they don't lose a single penny by writing down the interest rate making you sign a, a new loan agreement. They don't lose one dime because the instrument they have is worth the same amount which they then can finance. Now here's the thing. This is the most important thing when people talk about writing down the principal. They say, well wait a second, they loaned the money. No they didn't. They actually did it. You see when TARP happened a few years ago, People always talk about Wells Fargo and that's Bank of America and Chase and all those things. And that's wonderful to talk about. People forget what happened in Tarp. Don't you remember a bank called Washington Mutual? Well, Washington Mutual was given to, given to, I think it was given to Wells Fargo. And we're going to give him a Chase. Thank you. Chase was given another bank. Chase didn't even used to exist in California, and they were literally given to them. The government gave them the money and said, you can use this to buy the bank, and they were bought for nothing. They never loaned people the money. Never. They're foreclosing on things they never own. And we are here to say that we, as the patriots, are going to defend the American economy. We are going to defend freedom of speech, and we are going to stop this attempt by the banks to dominate and to destroy our society. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Jeff and Erica and Mel Hyman from Justa Acusta. Acusta. Causa Justa, Just Cause, Spanish. Causa Justa, English, Just Cause. And we do housing work in Oakland and San Francisco. And our work is about stabilizing neighborhoods and stopping the displacement that is ruining families, ruining neighborhoods, draining resources from cities and counties, uh, you know, ruining our health, because we know that when they attack our housing, they attack our health. And so we see these uh, increasing uh, symptoms of you know, stress-related diseases. We see a lot of family dissension from the, from the mess that the banks have created. And so I want to I wanna ask you, uh, who got the money? They got the money. So who got the money? They got the money. They got the money, but we got the bill. Who got the money? They got the money, and we got the bill. Who got the money? They got the money. They got the money. Okay, so here we go. Who got the money, money? They got the money, money. We got the bill. Who got the money, money? They got the money, money. They got the money, money. We got the bill. Who got the money, money? They got the money, money. They got the money, money. We got the bill. Who got the money, money? They got the money, money. They got the money, money. We got the bill. Okay? And we are sick of that. We're finished paying for the crimes of the 1% and their willing friends, their friends are willing to put us out of our homes, make us homeless while our houses sit up empty and we crowd in with some generous family member or we sleep in our cars or we, you know, tough it out under a bridge or on the encampment at the city plaza outside of the <laughs> mayor's office in Oakland, right? The Occupy encampment, right? So at Just Cause, what we know is that our power is in our unity. And so our work is about bringing people together across all the differences that have been used as an excuse to divide us. And we are saying we are through with those divisions and we are finished with supporting the 1% in their robbery of us. So we want to invite you to join us in unity in calling for a moratorium now. Aurora, right now, moratorium, yes. Thank you, Nell. Uh, before I make an announcement about going on to march, I just want to say that um, we're calling for a nationwide moratorium. This is a statewide event, but we want a nationwide moratorium. Stop foreclosures, stop evictions. Uh, there's a Save Our Neighborhoods Act of 2012 to keep families in their homes, preserve neighborhoods, maintain home values, and strong tax base. Stop home abandonment and neighborhood blight. Now, Brother Carter's over there and uh, Lisa, and they'll lead you on the march down the Capitol Mall and they'll tell you where they're going. And uh, then you'll be coming back here in about an hour. There'll be an opportunity for a few people who haven't spoken yet to speak out, uh, speak over there. So uh, please join them and uh, meet Brother Carter on the ground area right over there. You'll hear him with his bullhorn. Thank you. And by the way, somebody's ID was found. Uh, the CHP haven't told us who that person is, so it's anonymous. <laughs> And by the way, as you go down the Capitol Mall, you'll be heading towards Wells Fargo Bank and Bank of America, and we're going to be foreclosing on them. Learn about it's fair play, and they sure deserve that. Hey, now, I'm going to go ahead and job stream so I can archive, and we'll adjust to the brighter light, and I'll be back in about 30 seconds. <laughs> 